Let's keep our focus on what is certainly the day's big story. Joining us is Professor Yunus Balim. He's with the School of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Wits University. Uh, Prof, thanks very much indeed for coming onto the program. We appreciate your time. I'm sure you've seen the video of that building collapse. What were your initial thoughts? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Michelle, and, th and uh, greetings to your, your viewers. Um, I mean, firstly, your your word is well chosen. It's a harrowing event just to watch it on, on, on the video. And of course, our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to those who've lost their lives, but also to those who are still trying to be recovered. And we, pray, we of course, pray that um, all of them emerge alive, mm. uh, if, if, if that is possible, yeah. Let me say, um, and I did listen to um, uh, Richard Wall's comment on, on uh, the reasons for the failure, and he's, he's correct. I mean, there are three possible areas. When I looked at that video, it, it seemed to me that there was a, a failure in the bottom layers because the building came down fairly neatly, uh, mm. if, if one could describe such, a, uh, such an event. Um, the, 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 the layered floors re have remained in layers, as it were. So it seems as though, and the first puff of uh, dust emerged from the bottom of the structure, it seems as though there may have been something going on in the, in the lower levels. Um, and so there are a few, few issues that could go, go wrong here. Um, one, of course, is that there was a design flaw. The, the structure was just not designed correctly, and somebody's going to have to assess that as well. It's unlikely because these processes are normally very well checked and so on. Hmm. Uh, the second issue is a construction methodology issue. Um, they they were uh, built the building too quickly, for example. So at the time that they were putting up the upper floors, the the columns or the foundations on the lower floors had not yet attained sufficient strength, um, and that can uh, that just means that the construction was a little bit too rapid. Hmm. Um, the third issue is, as uh, 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 Professor Wallace indicated, that there was just overloading. Somebody put a structure or a uh, um, a load where it shouldn't have been. Uh, somebody drove a concrete truck onto the structure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. Um, but there's also an issue of the materials. Uh, we, we, we're in a country now where it's very difficult to monitor the quality of things like cement, for example. We've got large amounts of cement that are coming into the country, and you know, the uh, uh, locally produced cements are usually subjected to very rigorous testing, etc. We don't necessarily check all of these, and people are buying uh, materials for construction, uh, cement, aggregates, etc. And we're not always sure that the, the specifications have been attended to. But there's also neglect during construction. Somebody decided the concrete was too stiff, um, put some water into it, and that, of course, is going to reduce strength. Mm. A whole range of, of, uh, of possible issues, and, and again, it's important to emphasize that this is it's very unlikely to be one factor only. Right, right. Uh, what we need to do is rely on the specialists, and I'm glad that there's conversation about somebody coming in, taking a thorough in assessment of, of all of these aspects, the, the design, the construction uh, process. Importantly, the skills available for, for this kind of work which is quite sophisticated. Mm. Um, this is not a garden path that is being constructed. It's a very sophisticated structure, and when it goes wrong, we see the tragic uh, situation that we are now witnessing. Yeah. So all of these things come together, and certainly a time for, uh, for caution, uh, for concern, for empathy, but also for being rigorous about ensuring that these things do not happen in the future. Prof, have you seen something like this um happening where a building is under construction and an incident like this happened? Have, have you seen something like this unfold in South Africa before? Yes, we have. Um, uh, you know, the, you, may, uh, you may not be aware, but in the early years of uh, uh, building of shopping malls, for some reason or other, we saw quite a few collapses during construction. Mm. Um, in, in one case that I was particularly aware of, it happened that the contractor decided to put all the roof sheeting in one spot, hoping that the workers would pick up from there and move it. But of course, it just overloaded that one spot. Um, and again, um, sort of an un unwise or ill-considered decision cost the lives of people, yeah. So these things happen. Uh, they're unfortunate. They're always unfortunate. And they're always is are lives at stake. And, and lives that get affected. Yeah. Um, but it does demand that we become a lot more careful. Um, 
and it, and it's about oversight it's about second guessing it's about doing the calculations twice as yeah. it were yeah. uh, just to make sure that and and sufficient eyes are on the project to to ensure that somebody everybody's back is being watched yeah I wonder whether this has crossed your mind, Professor Balem. Um, we've talked so much about um, the mushrooming of the construction mafia in various parts of the country. Has something like sabotage come to mind for you? Uh, no, it hasn't. It hasn't crossed my mind, and I'm. I, um, I mean, I, uh, you know, the, the depth of uh, of <laughs> of human behavior, the lower levels of human behavior, is said to have no bottom. Uh, but no, it hasn't crossed my mind. I'm not. Uh, I would be um, very, very surprised if this is a case that somebody would go to that level. Uh, but the issue of um, of uh, not only uh, uh, the construction mafia, which is really an extractive approach, um, give me and I'll go away, to the, the the concern about the competence of people who are actually putting up structures. Um, the way the governance hygiene of the way in which uh, uh, construction tenders are being awarded, um, the, 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 the assessment of those who are, are undertaking fairly sophisticated projects, sometimes with very shallow prior experience, um, in the hope that the structure will stand up, um, is a serious problem. And it, as a, it demands that fine minds and, and warm hearts are brought into the project to make sure that those, the vulnerable are properly attended to, as we're seeing in this case, which was a serious neglect. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that's certainly something that I hope, and I'm sure all of us who are tracking this story hopes the investigations will take into play, uh, into, con into consideration, um, the awarding of Indeed. this contract and, and who was, was behind uh, this building. So, so now we're being told, Prof, that we have three days now to recover the people who are still trapped under the rubble. Um, 47 people, we now know that 27 have been rescued, six people are confirmed to have died. And of course, uh, Professor Balem, it's, it's not as easy as just removing a concrete slab here and there, right? You make a move no. one in one area and it can have a disastrous effect mm. in another. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, absolutely. And of course, as, I, as I'm counting, we're down to two days uh, remaining. Mm. Uh, one day has elapsed, yeah. Uh, and you're right, it's just, just going through this process is a, is a difficult engineering project on its own. And, and, and I'm very, very pleased to see that volunteers have emerged um, uh, to, to assist because in many ways, um, just as we're seeing in war zones around the world, you actually have to go and remove rubble by hand. Yeah. Uh, in order to avoid uh, uh, the further damage that you could actually be um, be causing, there will come a time at which, under with the best will in the world, you're going to have to use a crane to remove that slab. And so, gently, ever gently, with very careful ca engineering calculations, these, as I think the the premier referred to it as delayering, uh, that process is going to have to happen, uh, and and as quickly as possible. Uh, these are you're almost doing engineering on the trot, as it were. Hmm. Uh, and I'm, my heart goes out to the, the technical people, the, the ambulance servicemen, the crane operators, uh, those who are picking up uh, bricks by hand, who have to be very, very careful about what they do. Yeah. But we're very thankful for the services that they bring as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Professor, let me thank you for your time this afternoon. Professor Yunus Balem is an emeritus professor in civil engineering at Wits University, um, and it is really a harrowing story um, and counting down to the two days that are left now to try and find as many survivors as possible in that rubble is going to be a harrowing exercise as well. Uh, stay tuned to Daytime Update at 2.30. We are meant to get an update from uh, the Western Cape Premier, Alan Windy. 